us around. Is it ready to go? <laughs> Welcome to the special meeting on, on the U.S. Treasury and Triumph updates. Uh, the governor signed the bill last week, end of last week, probably at the last minute. <laughs> but uh, so we're we're good to go. We've got some great projects in the bin, and we're excited about having some money to do some wonderful things. So with all that in mind, Bill, would you yes, present to us? Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioners, I uh, just wanted to give you a, a brief overview of all the moving parts to answer any questions that you have um, and look for you know, some direction as we move forward into the next steps. Um, a lot of the information in your packet I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. You, you've already been versed in it, but a lot of this was for the public purpose as well. Um, so Triumph will be the major focus of the conversation, um, but I wanted to make sure you knew that we were working toward all the different pots of money and how they're strategically linked and how they interface and what we need to do to position what we're coming to this format to move forward. Um, so with that, Madam Chair, is there any direction or you want me to move, move ahead? Oh, I'm sorry. You want me to move ahead? Yes, just move ahead and then we'll all ask right. I got some technical assistance. Um, Basically, as you know, um, uh, all of this, uh, uh, the genesis with this was from the Restore Act. So I wanted to give you just a recapture of that because it is important because I did want to update you on our meeting with U.S. Treasury. Um, basically, as you know, that there are basically five pots within um, that component. The Board of County Commissioners controls um, pot one <laughs> specifically. Uh, and as you are aware, we've worked on our first 17 projects with the 5.7 million um, that was allocated, actually a little bit more with that, um, as some other uh, responsible parties were involved. Um, we met, uh, I guess it was two, two weekends ago, um, with the U.S. Treasury team. We had the University of West Florida, their president, uh, and their leadership team came over. Senator Broxson, uh, Senator Gaynor was scheduled but didn't make it, Brad Drake. Uh, and then our staff, I know Stan and Melinda were very uh, happy about giving up a weekend. Um, uh, we had commissioners there, um, and I really appreciate that effort. I think it was very effective. The first part of the meeting, and I've asked Melinda just to give a, a quick update on that, was to move these seven, 17 projects most efficiently through the multi-year implementation plan. Um, that plan was completed. You know, we went through an extensive stakeholder assignment. Uh, projects were vetted, brought to your attention, advertised, and then sent to Treasury. Um, we're looking for final approval uh, uh, on that conceptual plan so we can move forward. Did you want to give a quick update on any of the dates and the work with Treasury? Um, Is that this? Uh, yes, sir. You're talking about. So. We had a very valuable meeting with Department of Treasury on May 17th. That was the Thursday before the Restore Conference that we had over the weekend. And Treasury had a nice sit down with me and Cameron Morris with Dewberry. We talked about some of the issues that Treasury was having. And then I also provided them kind of a written response. They've since then, last week, provided me um, a response back. So we're going to we're meaning uh, Cameron Morris and myself are going to go through this document and make sure that everything is according to what we expected and then submit that for acceptance to the Department of Treasury. So that's where we're at. You go ahead and skip that. Yeah, what were some of the, what were some of the comments that, that they had? It was mostly just um, housekeeping yeah. items, just the way they, we had it organized. Prior to uh, the previous submittal that was um, presented by a previous consultant with Dewberry, she made it very detailed. And so the Department of Treasury doesn't actually need that much detail in the multi-year implementation plan. It should be pretty just matter of fact. This is what we're asking for. This is how much it cost. And we went into quite an elaborate spread. So we're just going to shorten that up a little bit and 
send the details to our grant application later on. Mm -hmm. and, and this this comes on the heels. This was basically our projects again with the 5.7. Um, and I do want to roll through that a little bit so you can see. I'll go ahead and skip to a couple more pages. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You see how fast I'm going through this, Commissioner Chapman? Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, if you look here at the uh, eight affected counties, you can see the percentage breakdown uh, that was agreed to and codified into federal law. Um, and that gives you a breakdown. The next page gives you an actual dollar amount. So you can see the dollar amount that's in phase one. And why I bring that to your attention, while there's going to be a lot of activity and buzz around the 300 million, and I'll describe that in a few minutes. Again, the, the unique piece that was allowed in federal law allows us to leverage these funds up against each other. Um, and as you look at the allowable uses, it's like any game, if we know what the rules are, we can win the game. So we want to make sure that as we look uh, with your direction on which projects that we select, that these dollars are interlinked into that process. So the second part of the meeting with U.S. Treasury, um, we did do, let me back up, we did do some site visits. We went through uh, some of our uh, potential projects, primarily based on the legislative priorities that you outlined, like 331, et cetera. When Commissioner Anderson and Commissioner Nipper and I met with Treasury in D.C., um, they were very open to our projects, so we sent them our projects across the board. Uh, so that although they were not submitted, we wanted to tell the story of where Walton County is going, both infrastructure, economic, and environmental. Um, we did go to the Muskogee Indian Tribe. It coincided where she had probably 100 visitors there, um, everything from FSU and indigenous uh, nursing care and things of that nature. So Treasury really got a sense of where we're trying to go. Um, and so that was the focus of the second day. We had a round table with the university and with the delegation folks and our staff to look at where we're going with this next $31 million in that process. So we've learned a lot, obviously, with this multi-year plan. We'll have to go through that process. We're going to come back to you all in the next couple of weeks with some ideas and recommendations as you see all this interfaces so that the main thing I wanted to press today was to update you and let you know that we are working all of these pots. Um, you can go ahead to the, to the Triumph side. It's going to be several pages back. But this is good for the public to talk about what these uses are. Um, since the governor signed this, I, obviously I've been inundated with phone calls from our local business people, realtors, et cetera, on how these dollars are to be utilized. So I'm, I'm trying to get out to the public. Yes, sir. <coughs> Billy, before we move on, of this pot one funding, is there any part of that presently earmarked for the 331 uh, corridor? No, sir, not in the first phase, but in the second phase, we directly asked them that, okay. and they were very receptive uh, with Commissioner Nipper and Anderson. That They actually said that if we wanted to apply all of these dollars to that project, we could, that they thought it was a very good project. Um, so they've, they've really tried to work with us on how we could link that to our priorities. But of these 17 projects that are listed in this book, that equates out to what, five point? It's, it's a little six. over that now because there was some additional money came in. It's actually about, about six, six, another something. million. So that still leaves a... About 31 million. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All Billy, right. I, Billy, uh, if we start working with Rayo, will that help at all? Yes, ma'am. we ma start adding Rayo into the picture? Yes, ma'am. That's very that important for our you staff. Don't need to add it now, but... Our staff to be coming back to you and looking at, you know, government will move at nano speeds, but... Um, the, the issue that we want to look at is using all of the toolkits in the, in the rural area of economic opportunity is absolutely a big deal. We can waive um, uh, additional grant percentages that we would have to match. Yep. It allows fast track opportunity for permitting. So on 331, for example, that Commissioner Chapman's talking about, if we extend that RAO, we have the ability to meet in Tallahassee with all the agency head and get things permitted within 90 days. So instead of having to wait and get a project that it, I know you all love the term shovel ready, but if it's not shovel ready, it could, it could in, infringe on our ability to move forward. So that's a great point. I appreciate that. We need to move forward on that. All right, let me talk a little bit about Triumph, which is the hot ticket of the day. Um, this was actually codified with the Gulf Coast Economic Corridor Act in 2013. 
Um, as you know, the money was available last year in session, um, but with the new speaker, there was no language uh, implementing or proviso that put that money into the actual Triumph Trust Fund. And so they felt like it needed to go through appropriations. And as you and the public have seen regarding Speaker Corcoran and his um, uh, direction from the House members on no economic incentives, um, those type issues that has played out and had an effect on this bill as well. But these dollars, um, it was supposed to be 75% of whatever was um, attained from the BP lawsuit with Pam Bondi, our Attorney General, would go into these funds. Uh, we were obviously very skittish about that at that time because the money went into general funds. So the first payment that was made to Tallahassee uh, was put into general fund, and that was $400 million. So that has been there since last July. Um, and the session, you know, we were, we were very thankful for the leadership of our local delegation, Senator Gaynor, uh, Brad, all of them, Brox and Mumford, everyone came together and defended that. Uh, I think uh, Senator Mumford termed it up very well. There are seven uh, senators in the Miami-Dade area. There are three in the central time zone. So their ability to hold these dollars was very important. And I say that because the 25 percent, the other 100 million, of this money disappeared in session. The other 15 counties um, from Taylor County to Monroe did not receive those dollars. They were put into general fund and they evaporated. Um, so it is very vigilant that we come in. The one thing that I'm most pleased with Senator uh, Broxson's uh, amendment, these dollars, and, and I'll go through the bill specifically, but he put into the bill that this would also be in perpetuity with the Triumph Trust Fund that was set up. So next session, now they can always raid the trust fund. That's happened with education and lottery and everything else. But we don't have to go back through appropriations on this project. So each year as this unfolds, it will not have to be, each project has to be approved through the legislature. It has to be approved by the Triumph Board. Um, so I'll pause there and see if there's any questions and then I'll move on. You can, you can keep going. Do, do you know when we're gonna get another appointee from this area on the board? Yes, ma'am. In the legislation, and that's a great point, the structure of this board remained intact. If you remember in the uh, first, when it was originally codified, um, we had five members that were originally appointed, and those members are Alan Bentz, former Speaker of the House uh, in Bay County, Bob Benezzi, um, a local developer, investor from Okaloosa, Stephen Riggs with Carl Riggs and, and Ingram, Pam Dana with the Innovation uh, get the name of exactly that corporation in Pensacola, and Stan Conley, the, the present CEO of Gulf Power. In the legislation that was passed under House Bill 7077, they added two new members. We worked very hard with our folks to make sure that the language included the four least populated uh, areas. Uh, Senator Munford was very focused on making sure that there was representation on the eastern side um, with Gulf Franklin and Wakulla. But with that scenario, it's unfolded that there, obviously Walton is one of the four least populated. So we anticipate a member being added from Walton County and we uh, anticipate a member being added from one of the other three. Um, uh, they were not gonna move on that commissioner until uh, the bill was signed on June 2nd. But the way the language is written, that is at the pleasure of the Senate President and the Speaker of the House. So those two will pick the two new members and I anticipate that very fast, I would say within the next, I don't know, you know, month or so, because they had a meeting that uh, Commissioner Commander and I went to their first Triumph Board meeting. And if you remember, they weren't allowed to take any activity votes, et cetera, until money actually came in. So they still technically couldn't take any votes, but they said that they were not gonna move forward with policy and direction until those two new members were seated. Um, so I anticipate that very soon. Uh, I've had had several calls from the public asking, you know, was that through us or was there a nominating process? And there's been nothing advertised in that. That is the, the speaker and the president's prerogative to appoint. Okay. Um, basically just a recap of the 2017 session. And as you know, they're going back into uh, session, but this bill was signed into law. Um, the governor had two ceremonial signings yesterday. Uh, in Panama City in Pensacola. Um, so we will not be affected by uh, the special session uh, in the process. But again, the structure has changed where the two new members were added. 
Uh, it also, uh, the counties were very uh, diligent in their efforts to make sure that there was some equality in this first uh, spread of dollars. And the way that that broke out is that 5% for each of the disproportioned counties would be guaranteed 5%. That doesn't mean for the public standpoint for this board that the Board of County Commissioners controls that activity. Uh, it just means that 140 of the 300 million, so 40% with five at, at each of the eight counties, um, would be dedicated in this first fiscal year spending, which will, this law will become effective July 1. So that basically equates out to about $15 million that each of the eight counties will have access to. And I'll get to the allowable uses in a moment and who could actually participate in those dollars. The main thing that changed in the bill was the economic incentives. Historically, EFI or DEO would look at a Boeing and say, we'll put $10 million into uh, you know, this infrastructure, et cetera, if you, were, uh, if you come in directly to the company. You can still do the infrastructure, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but you can't incentivize uh, a singular business. You can look at clustering, you can look at career development, et cetera, but you can't have it for a specific one entity. So for local government, it gives us a lot of flexibility um, in the direction that we want to go. So the first uh, payment of this uh, $300 million, 5% for each county. In the consecutive years, which they skip next year in the funding stream, and then after that it's about $100 million that will be coming in for the next 15 years. Uh, that breaks down to 4% uh, guaranteed to each county. Uh, and you will have a more active role in the process because in statute you are uh, required to look at soliciting projects from the school boards and the municipalities and the folks that were there. So we'll come back later and give you recommendations as that policy unfolds with Triumph. Um, they were given a million dollars of the 300 um, to basically set up their operations because they're, a, they're basically a not, they're a governmental created corporation. Um, and they, on the original bill were under DEO, but they specified that they have no oversight by DEO. They are given uh, lots of statutory requirements for auditing. Um, massive amounts. Each of their members are held to the highest level of accountability. Uh, they'll have to disclose all their financial dealings. They can't have any dealings with this six years post that position. So it's very, very tight on how these dollars are going to be spent. And I say all that emphasizing this is a long haul and so as you all make decisions and we work with our, our colleagues with the county and um, the school board and the cities, they're going to look at what kind of projects that we do, and so we want to make sure that we do things right so that we have another shot at the apple in consecutive years as we come forward. So that's a 5% first time, 4% thereafter um, in the process. Go ahead, and uh, I'll get to the specific uses of it. I'll try to be, try to be quick. Billy, is it, once it gets put into our funding, is it use or lose? If we don't use it, we have to give That's it back? That's a great point. Statutorily, the way it normally works in each fiscal year of the legislation, if you're uh, like one of our, pro which one of our projects got vetoed, we'll talk about it in a moment. But you, normally speaking, when a project is uh, uh, appropriated, basically it comes into law, you go through the RFP and you have a year to spend that money. If you don't have that money spent, okay. then it goes back to the legislature. Theoretically, that would be the case. They want to move and put these dollars on the ground, but because it's a trust fund, I don't believe that it will be a use or lose scenario. You know, in other words, obligating the money and the strategies and everything need to be there, but it's not like the legislature is going to reach back in because once it's authorized to move, which will happen basically 30 days with the, the signing, or July 1st, that money moves. The Triumph Board controls that money, so it's a separate entity, but that's a great question. Um, if you look at the allowable uses, some of the allowable uses that were in the original bill, such as Avalorum tax reduction, uh, you can use them for local government match um, that we're all aware of uh, in the process. And so some of the changes, again, with the infrastructure and tourism, I've been working with Jay and his team at TDC. 
This gives us an opportunity to look at tourism in a different focus as well. Um, where infrastructure and uh, we've had discussions uh, looking at some of our farm to table components where we were actually looking at hospitality and hotel management and some of the resources we can do so we're going to start creating and bubbling up some ideas from staff that we can present to you and then you can give us further direction I anticipate that within and again this is a, a guess but I anticipate within the next 90 to 120 days Triumph will give us more clear uh, application process on what we need to do. There are statutory requirements of what has to be in the application, but literally they're starting from scratch. They're having to hire directors, legal counsel, and things of that nature. So a lot of it will be us continuing our plan. And as you know, we've been working at this for over a year. We've got a lot of projects that are very teed up. We'll just have to massage them back into the application process. Um, one of the things I spoke with Jeff Goldberg about, for example, um, there's a, uh, an allowable use that's based on the coastal impact uh, area uh, for training and personnel. That's pretty unique. Um, you know, there was a good lobbyist that put that in. Um, so we'll be looking at all of these allowable uses by the individual departments under your domain to start crafting out a plan for each of those. Um, so t uh, infrastructure is obviously our main focal point based on your legislative priorities, which goes back to the question uh, that Commissioner Chapman asked about. All of these monies could be utilized for infrastructure, et cetera. Now, the stronger we make it with environmental and economic tie-ins like our, our wastewater system, specialized projects, they want transformational products. These are very business savvy people that will, you know have been appointed to the board um, they're going to want to see counties looking unique uh, we're doing that we're looking at public private partnerships that were allowed in 12 and 14 on the on uh, legislative language so we'll keep coming to you with ideas um, eventually we'll need some help but i think we can do that internally initially trying to figure out what we're doing um, so infrastructure as you see up there is a big scenario the county um, school boards, the K through 20, uh, with our local colleges and our universities are also a major component of this. And again, I think Walton County has positioned itself very well. We've been in this for a year speaking with them. I've had follow-up meetings with the school board. Uh, we've been meeting with the University of Florida and with the president of UWF um, and how all that can entwine. Um, I spoke with Shane Abbott with the local college board and working with their new president with the College of Northwest Florida. So part of what we'll do as we look at the allowable uses, we'll look for collaborative partnerships that are allowed in the process and then we'll come back to you as we advance that because those entities are going to need our help as well. Um, you know, they don't want 9,000 different projects being submitted with no symmetry. So the more collaborative, the more focused and the more leveraging we are that makes sense. You know, if we go in, for example, and say to Triumph, and this is a hypothetical, but if we walk in and said we're willing to put some of our pot one money into the process and link that over to Triumph, then we're in a much better position to get to actually get approved. Um, any questions on the allowable uses? Are we doing anything with other counties to do regional projects like, for instance, the Chot I know we have one Choctatchee Bay to try to revitalize that. Are, do you see yes, ways that we can work with other counties as well to do more regional projects to get, uh, together? Yes, ma'am. Part of the, uh, the, the tail end of session, um, the, the city uh, municipalities and the school boards were feeling very disenfranchised on how this bill was <clears throat> moving. Um, and one of the things that we've done is we've been working with the Regional Planning Council. Uh, I presented in Destin, um, uh, t actually twice, but reaching to them collaboratively and looking at where the school boards are going. Okaloosa has actually got some projects teed up, both from the uh, academic standpoint and environmentally. Their board voted this morning um, to put actual money into the estuary program. That's the $2 million. And that's why I did want you to see these other pots of money because they're important. Mm -hmm. There's a $2 million estuary RFP that's basically out and collaboratively working with them environmentally. <coughs> uh, I met with one of the board members of the uh, water management district about three years ago. They submitted a plan with the most critical needs within the five watersheds. Uh, within the eight counties and their projects and that would lean into pot two but there absolutely is collaboration and there's always 
parochialism and things that can go go south but yes ma'am we're trying to look at a formal structure we've reached out to other counties um, and obviously Walton wants to lead in that process but we don't want to lose these dollars that are in these other pots so that is a very strong issue particularly on the environmental side because if you remember in pot two there's a billion six um, that's in that pot and Herschel Vineyard is the governor's new trustee I've met with him on multiple occasions about really getting behind DEP and the water management district for those projects mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at the results from those Destin meetings and it looks like uh, of those people poll their transportation was 152 was the top priority and environment was you no know, city utilities or utilities water sewer uh, energy da -da was the second 125 and then environment 116 so these go right along with a lot of our priorities Abs as well. absolutely and those were great meetings because you know the regional planning council is a board structured with county and city commissioners to begin with mm -hmm. the school board I did meet with uh, Senator Munford about having the school board superintendents work with us um, our superintendent here has been awesome he sent his team his team was at the at the Treasury meeting I've met with uh, his leadership team and so we'll keep interfacing their ideas if you look for example uh, early childhood development is also an allowable use um, and the K through 20 and that's obviously a little out of uh, out of my swim lane so reaching into that intellectual capital with them with charter schools with mm -hmm. the regular public schools what we can do with early childhood development mm -hmm. if you look at career source that's allowed in there that's another sleeping giant that we can work with and kind of control our destiny of why businesses and folks want to remain here so from water quality or quantity to economics to infrastructure we'll break down each of those areas and come back with recommendations yeah, one of our biggest needs down here now is daycare centers there's not enough places for par the parents that work to leave their young children so that's you know maybe that would work now when we start getting questions about projects you know the second round of projects I suppose we need to be we need to start thinking of what process we're going to use to vet those projects I mean I know we're not going to talk about it probably today but just to be thinking of you know what process do we want to follow we had a great co consortium the first time we might want to move away from that more to uh, an economic development pro uh, process uh, more I I'm not sure I'm no not, you're 100 percent correct and out. I think our job will be incumbent to come back with some recommendations okay. based on statutory uh, overlay and how that works but because triumph has geared up where the county's responsibilities are um, and it sounds like common sense but a lot of times these agencies don't work with each other like the career source our veteran affairs folks I mean you have three folks for example that work in veterans affairs we want to look at all the programs that are allowed in state and federal funding and how does that link in so we are going to have to dig down to those levels and then come back and give you some ideas on how you would structure it uh, we are going to need you know you still have to do in the 31 uh, main uh, 31 million remaining with the multi-year plan and all those requirements etc but we've learned a lot in that first phase and I think we can expedite that process but yes ma'am you're 100 percent right all the board members need to be thinking this is the vision and the implementing and the arm to really do some of those things that we can link those together so getting the right folks who are putting Walton County first and looking very comprehensively at our needs is where we need to go um, any other questions on the allowable uses that's good all right um, bill from what I understand from meeting with Treasury our priority list can change it's just a process we have to go through to change it right absolutely and they were five days I think we have public meetings and things like that and they did talk about the flexibility of not an entire project because we talked about sequencing and leveraging you know if we have you know our 331 sewer or if we have a particular project that we can move on with triumph much faster that we can actually go to them and say we need this as a placeholder so we can show dedicated leverage dollars to it they were very open to that so again that learning curve you know even though it was painful uh, for for all of us including our applicants but the scenario is I think now we'll be in a better position to exercise on that 31 million um, to link into triumph okay um, and uh, and again so remember just kind of and I'll recap and close um, in pot one you have 31 million dollars that's under your domain and your actual approval there's 1.6 billion 
that's controlled under what's called the Federal Council, and there are 11 appointees. Six of those are presidential, five of those are gubernatorial. Um, and uh, Herschel Vineyard that I mentioned early is that. He's been very focused on creating that um, uh, environmental component because that's a lot more environmental leaning. So we want to compete. That's competitive with the other four states. So if we put, and it has to be regional or statewide impact, so we'll reach to the Audubon and TNC and all of the environmental communities where we're all collaborating on that project. So I, I wanted to reassure you that because Triumph is the hot ticket, we haven't lost focus on the other pots. Pot three that Commissioner Commander is uh, your representative on, there's $290 million on that pot, um, and we're working through that under the state. It's kind of the same multi-year plan, but it has to be what's called a state expenditure plan, which is encompassing of the 23 counties, so we're working on that. The other thing that's an advantage to some of our projects that we've been working with academia-wise, by working with the University of Florida and Farm to Table and Best Practices and IFASIS and everybody that's cattlemen or herd guys, um, the scenario is, is that we can look at utilizing them and coming up with a lot more dollars into the process because if you look at part f POTS 4 and 5, and Florida designed it under the Florida Institute of Oceanography. That's more NOAA monitoring science and those type things. But for the average county or the average Board of County Commissioners, that's outside the scope of where they've been involved. So by reaching in for these academic partners, I think we're availing ourselves to a lot more, not only career development, best sciences and everything, but we're also utilizing where we can go after research dollars, we can have academia where these kids can stay here, be expo exposed to product, and then be able to move dollar-wise with our university. So we'll continue all of those pots. And with that, I'll wind it up. Billy, how far along down the process are we to begin discussing the 331 project, the corridor, the water and sewer from the bay to, to Vignac? We basically took a head start, Commissioner, to answer your question. There were conceptual drawings done. Uh, the city of Freeport and the city of Defuniac did engage the engineer to, uh, to design at least a concept. Uh, and so that we know we're looking at approximately $30 million from the bay to Defuniac in a three-year outlay. Those plans have to go to 30% design build type scenarios and permitting and things, but at least we're there with the concept and an idea of where we're going. So from a, from a technical standpoint, we have work to do. We're gonna to need to be moving into that design build scenario and working through it, but uh, at least we have a plan. There are structural issues that are gonna to have to be addressed and how we work with or without certain things in the process, but we're gonna to have to make sure that we move it because what you don't wanna do is when that 90 to 120 days comes up and y'all direct me with what you want me to apply for, what's the structure, what's the ask, and what's the technical component? Because again, we wanna be, and again, these are our fellow counties, we're not trying to outmaneuver anybody, but we wanna make sure that we've presented, we know what we're doing, we back it up with empirical data and statistical linkage, so we're pretty, we're pretty close, but we will be coming to you with, you have to give me a structure, you have to give me uh, an implementation arm so I know what we're asking for and to who would receive those dollars. So there's some technical things that have to be uh, processed for us to be prepared in the next 90 to 120 days. Well, I agree, and as far as the cities that are being involved in this, I think what we're lacking is the data that we need to make a decision one way or the other. Yes, sir. And I don't know who's going to be responsible for that or who we direct to do that, but we're going to have to have these cities tell us exactly what they got available, how they're planning on moving forward in maintaining or in, uh, installing and maintaining these, this system. Because right now I have some reservations that it can pro it can be done. I 100% agree with you, and I think that, that I think it's going to be a collaboration. I think your staff, including me, our engineers, our public works folks, we're going to need to be given the first uh, draft of this. We're going to need to tell you sort of where we are, so we can get everything from permitting to kind of cost ironed out. I think at that point I am going to come to you because this is going to take way beyond a one person shop, and even with our county, we're going to need. Um, 
engineering, we're going to need grant writing, we're going to need legal uh, guidance. There's going to be a lot of moving parts um, that need to come forward. And my plan is to work with Larry and administration and other folks to come up with some ideas to get what you need because you're going to need to make very sound decisions based on that factual data so that we can advance. Because if this is not done, one of the things that Speaker Bentz made very clear is that they're going to do their due diligence and they're not going to put money into projects with broken wings. So we better have all of that information gone through before we submit. So that's a very well, valid point. Well, in the absence of the city's being forthright, it's going to force the county to do something we probably don't want to do. And that's some type of uh, utility authority. Have you thought about that? Since yes, sir. That? One of the things that might, it's incumbent upon me is to give you all the options that I can think of. And, and again, we're going to have to reach out for, for folks um, that know things certainly more than I. But absolutely, you're going to have to look at a utility structure that either has collaboration and you have, there, there's all types of options. If you remember when we had a joint meeting with the city, um, uh, some of the attorneys talked about what statute allows you to do under use of the formation of a utility authority, how you can structure it, how you'd go through. I will be going over the next, I would say over the next 30 days as well, trying to reach out to the state for guidance through DEO to give us what we statutorily can do. And then obviously the lawyers will have to guide us on that. But there has to be a singular issue or singular entity that could do this. And I agree with you, the cities cannot do this independently. Um, so we'll, I, I'll be gathering that information for you. Thank I think you. it's going to be a time we're going to have to think outside the box and it might not, it might not look the same as it looks now. Um, this to me is a great way of bringing our community together. And um, I know we talked about the concept of one Walden, you know, bringing us together. So I, I envision, and I don't know, you know, if y'all want to do these, but staff, I'm, I'm willing to meet with um, key stakeholders in the county and get ideas. And I know Commissioner Commander's been doing some great visioning meetings, and but I see this kind of as another level of, I really want to see input of from our business world, from our, our education world, coming together to kind of formulate a plan. And I'm going to talk about uh, a, a po possibility we have a little bit later on on the agenda of doing a, you know, a study of 331 before the businesses do start coming in. But um, Yes, yes ma'am, that's a great point. And I, you know, I've, I've asked the chairman, and I'll ask each one of you, not only in your district, but countywide. Um, and this may be everything from coaching and mentoring, but the efforts of, you know, there's, uh, we've kind of had some informal discussions about one Walton. One Walton will be led by, you know, individuals within the community, um, but it will have a collaborative partnership with us. We need that intellectual capital around the table, um, you know, and again, I think that helps us bridge the south and north end mm -hmm. scenario. Um, everything from culinary, farming, transportation, there's a lot of intellectual capital on the south end that needs to be linked to our folks on the north end so that we're partnering. Mm -hmm. And I will be asking each of you, and you know, one of the things that we'll, uh, the chairman had asked me to start looking at is kind of a chairman's round table with our CEOs. And it may be, you know, and these are informal, they're not advertised per se, I mean, it'd be one commissioner scenario, but we want to reach out to them. So for all the public listening to this, we want them involved, you know, we need to hear it. Um, and so I will follow up with all of you and put that together. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I, I do. I, I want you know I went to the TPO conference while all this was going on. Um, I just want to um, kind of hammering on this radio because they talked to me about it, knowing the money was coming. Um, we are sixty percent more likely to get grants approved if we have a match, and I see the radio that ninety day window, the grants, everything really coming together if we get that radio designation because that is only going to help the property up in the north end that I was we're all proposing as workforce housing. Absolutely. Where are we at on the designation? I mean, they, they were actually coming to me during the meeting, talking to me, because most people were from Tampa, and they knew the, pot, the Triumph money was. I, there's a couple of, there's a t uh, for my shop uh, that had fallen in more into an economic development standpoint, and so I haven't, I haven't pursued that. But I think we need to, because you're right, it's a, it's a critical piece. 
But the scenario is the governor has the ability to to expand because Freeport Freeport's is the only uh, entity right now where that exists. And we had had some preliminary discussions about running that up 331 mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, splitting out on 90 up to uh, the, the, the former poultry plant and then over toward Mossy Head right. so that we truly could have it. Uh, and, and, and this goes down to all levels, like even in our comp plan and our planning, um, our planning department presented uh, several years ago. It wasn't, it wasn't voted on by y'all, but fast track permitting. So we could use state scenario and we could use local where if a business is in that spine of 331 or 90, we can fast track them and so could the cities because you know the city's gonna have a different comp plan, et cetera. So if we have collaboration with them, but it is a very valuable tool, not only state agency wide, so we can do it. Like if you if you were a Rayo up that 331 and a business came in, I mean we could literally flip them less than 90 days and they're they're turning bricks and so we and it, and it can be separated from the south end scenario so we're not affecting what's happening here it's a designated you know basic industrial zone where we could come in so a hundred percent with with your direction i'll be glad to address the i know we can't vote today but getting to the governor etc because and we need to invite him I mean, he just vetoed the the autonomous vehicles which is a major blow to where we're trying to go we're, we're trying to come up with some scrambling plans but the scenario is we need him to see that Walton County is doing things innovatively so that we can utilize it, and that Rayo designation would be significant. Is there a way to get that moving? Is there anything we need to do as a board? We'll, we'll be glad. We'll get with Billy and look at the next steps. Yeah, because I, I think that's, that's how that project's going to really get moved. I think if we can get to the point, and I, as most of you, all of you know, actually, I, detail's not my thing. But if we can come back and show you an actual deliverable schedule, with some estimated time frames because this is so complex, not only for your, you know, for your direction uh, giving, but for the public so that they see all of the steps that we're moving in a sequential order and how those work because we're gonna need you guys back in DC. We're gonna be dealing with those federal agencies. Don't forget about these other dollars from commerce or CDBGs and different things. I know, for example, Commissioner, in, in the project you're heading up with the affordable work housing, we could utilize economic CDBGs to advance those in the thing. So, and again, if we've got that designation, we can get exempted from a 50, 75% match. We could partner actually with the homes in Washington, for example, with that paddleboard trail in the environmental section. If we partner with them, you know, they have those designations. And so there's a lot of strategy in that. So I'll get with Larry and we'll, we'll move that forward. And just a point that Billy made, um, we don't need to forget all the traditional funding sources that we've tapped into over the years. Uh, and what we're, what we're seeing as um, big opportunities uh, could be the, the leverage we need to get more of the funds that have been there forever that we just didn't have opportunities to get to. That's correct. So in this whole process, and I'm speaking to us as much as the board, you know, let's not lose sight of all those traditional funding opportunities that were there that we've had disappointments over time, but perhaps what we're seeing now will give us the ability to leverage some funding here to get back through some of those areas as well. Well, and one, one of the immediate things that we can help do, and, and I know these, uh, the two new commissioners saw a lot in D.C. where these funds, so much goes from minority inclusion to fast-track commerce grants. Uh, we have a very good federal lobbyist. I've really uh, enjoyed working with him. We need to utilize that more, you know, and we forget, and this is not just this county, um, but throughout with my experience. Um, we go to Tallahassee, for example, and we look for appropriations, and it's almost like, hey, guys, what do you, what do you have instead of where we're going? And I think Larry's exactly right. We need to stay exactly with the format. We do not change. We know what our vision is. Mm-hmm. We know, and we're not just looking at that straight-up appropriation. There are bagoodles of dollars. You know, you're talking about $83 billion in that budget that flow to agencies. And so when we look at the different agencies, it, you know, and we're good at what we know, which is FERDAP and things of that nature, but with grant writing in the right team, we can go after dollars and utilizing our lobbyists far better to deliver those products. So at the end game, our citizens aren't having to pay for that. And I, I do want to end with very one specific. If we do this well, we are absolutely reducing the tax burden on the folks that you all represent. These are non-taxpayer money 
opportunities that will never happen again, infrastructures and other things. So if we do it well, it may cost some money to, to, to do the planning and the implementation, but I, what an opportunity for Walton County to lead, not only for ourselves, but the <coughs> handle. Anything else? Any, anything else? Thank you. I'll be glad to address, you know, back, uh, I'll get with Larry, and then as time unfolds and we know what Triumph's doing, I'll come back with some more information. Right. I would say, uh, you know, I couldn't let this thing say something. I think it's imperative that you work very closely with Lewis. I think our people need to understand this is an instant grits. We're not going to get all this money in one fail swoop, and we're going to be riding high. You know, what we do with the first lump, for example, will determine the rest as we go forward. And yes, it is a 15 year process. So I, I think that a lot of the perception out there with, the, with uh, people is that we're gonna get this money right away and we're gonna be able to spend it on my business and make it better and we're gonna, you know, yes, we're working for a larger picture. We're looking, we're working for a picture down the road that's gonna benefit our children and grandchildren but it's not going to be something that happens overnight. We're, we're gonna to have to work for this and, and tie everything together. That, I, that's I, a great point, Commissioner, because like I mentioned earlier, I have been contacted already by tons of folks that are saying, well, can I, can I apply for this and yeah. get this with my business and can they put in you know, a new building yeah. for me? And again, that is not how these dollars mm -hmm. are gonna be it's spent. Be that being said, working with you know, the SBA, the mm -hmm. chamber, our business community, we know from the career source and the supply chain and what we can do with the infrastructure, with the personnel and the things that we need, the education, we can arm those business leaders with everything that they need to be successful. So it's not a direct appropriation, but they do allow us to help with the infrastructures and the things that we can do. So I'll be, any constituent that you want me to meet with, I'll be glad to, to follow. One of my favorite movies is, is it The President, where you know they, they circle DuPont Circle and um, um, Jamie Foxx over, um, is the president. And anyway, somebody says to him, if you don't tell them what's going on, if you don't tell them the truth, they will eat sand and take anything. So that's where it's imperative that we put the right message out there and tell the people the, tr the actual facts. Because if they don't know the facts, they're going to make something up. Absolutely. And, and, and again, like folks, no matter what, what side of the per se aisle or focus point, they're all linked together. If we're after the environmental components and septic tanks and stormwater, they're all linked together. And when you look at master planning and where that 20 year window, I think we can reach into your constituents and, and, and help guide them. So anything that you need at that point, we'll, we'll follow up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? The, this meeting is adjourned. We will see you at four o'clock.